class is now in session i'm professor hockey and today we will be doing another player review and we are down to the final two players on the sharks rosters to review so the worst two players for the san jose sharks this past season and second to last is eric Carlson and I feel as though the reason that I have his grade end up being this low is partially my fault for having such high expectations for Eric Carlson but the reason I ended up having these high expectations well we really have to go back to the offseason when Eric Carlson first arrived in San Jose to understand it so to set the scene it is the 2018 offseason the Sharks had a pretty successful year they managed to sweep the Anaheim Ducks in their first round of the playoffs but in the second round they would lose out to the Vegas Golden Knights in their in inaugural season and the Golden Knights would end up going to the Stanley Cup Finals where they would lose to the Washington Capitals and the Sharks were kind of at a crossroads where going into the next season the 18-19 season would potentially be their final year as an extremely competitive team as they had a lot of expiring contracts at this time Pavelski, Donskoy, Braun, the entry-level deals of Meyer and LeBanc were also expiring, and so it was rather clear that going into the 1920 season, there would be some changes to the Sharks roster, and they may not be as competitive as they could be. As such, Doug Wilson felt as though to finally try and get this team over the hump, a big move was necessary. And during that offseason, what better, you know, timing could there have been to see a player like John Tavares available after his contract ran out with the Islanders and he decided to not re-sign with them. Because while the Sharks had at the time very solid goaltending with Martin Jones and a very solid defensive core, and even some very solid offensive players, especially with the pickup of Evander Kane at the trade deadline of that year, the Sharks were missing one thing which was a game breaker on the offensive side of things they haven't really had one of those since they had joe thornton many years ago they had a lot of strong offensive players like pavelski couture and hurdle but none of them who could really take over a game and john tavares could be that guy and he would really fill in a hole on the sharks roster and really just pull them all together and make them an extremely complete team and the other good news is that technically besides money the sharks wouldn't actually have to lose any assets to be able to pick him up it would be just a strict addition to the Sharks team and the Sharks came very close to being able to pick up John Tavares and to the point where they were within the final two teams to decide between but in the end Tavares decided to go with the Toronto Maple Leafs his fan uh favorite team from his childhood and as such the Sharks were kind of left in this awkward spot where they put all of their eggs in the John Tavares basket and yet it did not really bear any fruit and so Doug Wilson still desperate to make a big move decided to look elsewhere and what other big name was available during the offseason well it was Eric Carlson except for unlike Tavares who could be picked up for free besides the money of course Eric Carlson was still on one more year of his deal with the Ottawa Senators and as such the Sharks had to give up a ton of assets to bring over Eric Carlson. Another reason why this didn't necessarily seem like as great of a move as the Tavares trade is, as I said, Tavares was filling a big hole for the Sharks. They didn't really have an offensive game breaker compared to Eric Carlson, who was kind of overkill in a way because he was a defensive game breaker, but the Sharks already kind of had one of those types of players with Brent Burns on the roster. So while Carlson would, of course, make them a better team, it was not really going to make them as much of a better team as the addition of John Tavares would have. Now, moving into that 18-19 season, there was a rough start but eventually Eric Carlson really found his groove with the San Jose Sharks but then we saw another reason why the acquisition of Carlson was a bit of a danger because of his injury history about halfway through January of that season he would end up getting injured and he would fail to play basically the rest of that regular season he would return in the playoffs and besides having a kind of rough defensive go of it there due to the injury that he was still playing through his offensive game was quite quite at a high level and so during the offseason of 2019 the Sharks made the crucial mistake though maybe it didn't seem like that much of a mistake at the time where they decided to re-sign Eric Carlson and make him the highest paid defenseman in the NHL at 11 and a half million dollars per year. Wilson used the logic that when Carlson was healthy and when Carlson was in the lineup the Sharks looked like a very good team and Eric Carlson looked like one of the best players on the Sharks if not the best player so even if he was overpaid which I don't think was quite arguable maybe it was only a million a couple million overpaid and he'd still be an effective player for the Sharks. Well that 
wouldn't necessarily be the case. In the 1920 season, Eric Carlson would take a massive step back from where he was when healthy in the previous year, and he'd kind of look not too great. His offensive game was still pretty good, but his defensive game definitely struggled. And by the end of the season, which was of course cut short, the Sharks were third last in the league, and as such, the first round pick that they gave up to the Senators in the Eric Carlson trade ended up being third overall. Going into the next season, which was this current one in 2021, we got all the hype about Eric Carlson where he talked about how in the 1920 season he was playing through an injury, and this was now going to be the first time with the San Jose Sharks that he was going to be coming into a season fully healthy, and all of these great things, and this is really what led to the expectations being high, as as I said, we saw Eric Carlson at his best in 1819, even if it was kind of brief, and we saw how good he could really be with the team. And so coming into the 2021 season, I thought at least 50 points should be expected for Eric Carlson. But as we move on to how he actually performed through this season, 52 games played, he missed a few due to injury, and we will obviously be projecting over an 82-game season. Eight goals on the year for 13 goals over a full season, 14 assists, which would be 22 assists over a full season, and 22 points, which would be 35 points over a full season. So starting off offensively, Eric Carlson coming in supposedly fully healthy, and yet this was his worst ever offensive season of his entire career, actually tied in terms of points with his first season in the NHL as a rookie. So a massive step back for Eric Carlson. This is less than 0.5 points per game, which is just kind of insane for a player of Eric Carlson's caliber, for a player who supposedly wasn't injured, and is also, while obviously on the wrong side of 30, not necessarily extremely old, like, uh, you know, Joe Thornton type of uh, decline might be expected. You know, you take a look at Brent Burns, and even he managed to put up more points, and he's about five years older than Eric Carlson, and yet here we are with a career low in terms of points, and it just seems as though even though we're three years with Eric Carlson on the team, he continues to have absolutely zero chemistry and zero synergy with anybody else on the team. Not only is Eric Carlson and the rest of the Shark squad on different pages, they seem to be in entirely different books at times. Because Eric Carlson at times seems to have the right idea, right? It's not entirely his fault the reason why he's having such struggles in terms of points, because a lot of the times he'll make some nice moves and set up some nice passes, but the rest of the Sharks roster just don't really seem to be ready to actually catch these passes. And when you look at him when he was on the Ottawa Senators the big big you know play that stands out in that 2017 playoffs was his pass high in the air that would land for Mike Hoffman to get the breakaway against the Boston Bruins and score that goal it's one of those really kind of recognizable goals of the past decade and that's just not really something that you'll see between Eric Carlson and any of the Sharks players because they just don't seem to have that type of coordination between each other even though Carlson has been here for a pretty long time at this point almost now what 200 or so games with this San Jose Sharks roster and it hasn't really changed all that much it's still been with Couture with Hurdle with Meyer with LeBanc all of these players have been here throughout Eric Carlson's tenure as a San Jose Shark and not only was it a struggle offensively for Eric Carlson his defensive game was also abysmal this season as we move on to his plus minus I talked about in my previous video Dylan Gambrell being bottom dead last in terms of plus minus Eric Carlson shared that space with him at also a minus 18 and it seemed as though Eric Carlson really had two modes defensively the first mode was just this kind of lazy uninspired play where he would kind of just stand in front of his goaltender he'd look extremely lost like a minor league player playing in the big leagues and he would kind of just be hoping that the puck would just hit him and he'd get the blocked shots to be able to clear it out and then sometimes the puck would just sort of go by him go into the net and he'd look behind him and he'd go like oh gosh darn it the puck went in he just looked very unengaged at time in the offensive zone and the other mode that Eric Carlson was occasionally in was almost trying a bit too hard where he would be attempting to make these stick check type of plays where he would skillfully try and steal the puck away from the opposing team's forwards 
And sometimes this would work and you'd say, wow, nice move by Eric Carlson. But sometimes it wouldn't work and you'd be, why wouldn't Eric Carlson play this more safely? So just generally, it was not a good season offensively for Car Eric Carlson as this was a career low for him in terms of points. And defensively, he was also quite bad. And if we move on to the time on ice, this is nowhere near where he usually is in his career, at least when he was with the Ottawa Senators. But this is still rather high, 20 three and a half minutes for the San Jose Sharks only behind Brent Burns in terms of total time on ice but as we see Eric Carlson doesn't necessarily have that much trust amongst the Sharks coaches while he is getting a ton of power play time I believe the most power play time out of all Sharks defensemen he in terms of shorthanded ice time he's actually fifth behind players like Shemek and like Vlasic who had significantly less time on ice than them and so while he is still trusted somewhat to be an offensive player for the San Jose Sharks his defensive game he's already lost the trust of a lot of the Sharks brass. And so when we finally move on to the grade, as I said, it might be partially my fault for why this grade is this low, as I had high expectations just due to the fact that I bought into the hype during this offseason that Eric Carlson would show up 100% healthy. But if this is 100% healthy Eric Carlson, I kind of want him to get injured again for next season because he was at least decently good when he was actually injured. So as such, I will be giving Eric Carlson the grade of a D. Class dismissed.